before the Emmy, so I thought I'd, you know. Give you something to, to think about. <laughs> uh, we're, you're killing it, you, as you always do. Okay, so I'll start with the movie. Sybil, your character, how did you get involved in this project? Um, well, my team sent me the script, and I read it and loved it and thought it was funny and smart, and Sybil, it's not something I've done before. I've wanted to do a rom-com for a really long time. It's I've grown up loving rom-coms, but this is a very modern take on a rom-com, and I just thought it was really smart, and I was convinced after I talked to Elise um, um, Duran, who, directed, who was our director, and I just loved her vision for it and loved what she wanted to bring to the set around inclusivity, around, you know, we're trying to have the, a sustainable set. She's really all about, you know, no plastic straws and, you know, you know, vegan leather, and so I just loved all of that, and I, I really want to surround myself with people who are trying to do the behind the scenes differently, because that is, I think, part of the awakening and the reckoning that we're having now in our industry is about not just what's on screen, but how people are treated behind the scenes, so I love being involved with projects that are trying to do that differently. So will we see you in any more rom-coms, or is this something that you, like, Enjoy doing. Will we see you doing this again? I had so much. I had so much fun. Sybil is such so, very natural. Sybil, <laughs> Sybil is such a, a sort of over the top, crazy kind of character. I would love to do more rom coms. Right now, I'm going to Bulgaria on Friday. I'm shooting a, an action comedy at the moment. So I just want to keep doing things I haven't done before and playing characters that are interesting and challenging. And I have always thought of myself as a character actor, and so I want to show people that I'm not just. You know, one dimensional. one dimensional, yeah. Yes, you are not. <laughs> the world knows. Um, so on another note, um, Women's Equality Day was August 26th, uh, Monday. Um, and I want to ask you, it's been an increasing number of trans women being murdered. And it's not gotten a lot of national media coverage. It's been, you know, on social media, but it hasn't got a lot of national coverage. What are your thoughts on, first of all, bringing more awareness to it on a national level? And how do we get to a place where we're also bringing awareness to the trans community to combat the issue of the crimes, the hate crimes that the women are facing. When it comes to violence against trans women, particularly black trans women, it's an intersectional issue. We're talking about folks who are at the intersections of poverty, of sex work, perhaps homelessness. And if you are involved in any kind of survival street economy, you're more likely going to be a victim of violence. The unemployment rate in the trans community is three times the national average, four times that for trans people of color. So when we talk about ending violence against trans people, certainly the folks who are murdering us <laughs> should stop murdering us and should stop killing us. Um, but then what what are, the, are there programs to support us getting jobs and having places to live and not we're experiencing discrimination? Their current administration wants to discriminate against us in homeless shelters and in health care. So we, when the, all of those things lead to violence against trans folks. So it's an intersectional issue if we want to end violence against trans folks. And then I think it's conversations that we have to have with ourselves and each other. If ever you feel some kind of way because someone else is living their lives and being themselves that is an interrogation that I always have to have with myself. What am I afraid of? What am I insecure about? And no one should die simply for being who they are. So this is a this is something individuals have to um, have conversations with themselves and each other about. And then on a systemic level, it's about having policies that don't continually stigmatize trans folks. When we are banned from the military, when um, protections of, for how trans children should be treated in schools are rescinded, that was the very first thing Jeff Sessions did when he came into it, became the attorney general. When all of these policies, it's a case going to the Supreme Court October 8th that will determine whether LGBTQ people are covered by Title VII, which bans discrimination on the basis of sex. So we have to have continued, we have to discontinue policies and vitriol that stigmatize trans people because it makes people think it's okay and then people have perpetuate violence against us and then 